If you're like me, you would have wondered a few times exactly how the world will look in 2030 and 2040. When we're all driving electric cars by 2040, will there be petrol stations? Will those petrol stations now be just battery charging stations? How will things change? When will they change? Well, welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. And you know what? Stoked if you've subscribed to the channel. There's been a lot of new subscribers lately. Fantastic to see you coming on board now. If you're a new subscriber or you're not a new subscriber, if you've been around for a while, it'd be awesome if you could support the channel by jumping onto my Patreon account or onto our Patreon account and joining us. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, if you've got to invest in any stocks, I recommend personally my portfolio includes BYD, Tesla, Xpeng, Piedmont Lithium here in Australia, and if you're living in China, CATL. If you're going to invest in any of those stocks and you want to start investing and making money, making really taking advantage of this whole situation where there's going to be this enormous disruption, money is moving from here to there, we might as well take advantage of it together, right? Well, create a stake account and I'll put my referral code in the description below. You'll get free stock. I'll get something out of it as well, which is awesome. And we'll both benefit. So make sure you use that referral code if you jump on stake. Now, Martin Vinkhuizen recently wrote for Clean Technica. It is not the task of car companies and governments to build out charging infrastructure. The only reason Tesla started building charging stations was because electric driving was new. There was nothing of the sort available. Nissan and Renault did the same in collaboration with third parties. Nowadays, charging infrastructure can be built by normal commercial companies. A charging station is no different from any other shop. It only sells a single product. But that is not unique. It is just a retail outlet that sells electricity to drivers of electric cars. The curbside charges you see in many cities in Western Europe are no different from the candy and soda vending machines that are all over schools, workplaces, and shopping malls. They will be ubiquitous. Now, Martin says that without adequate charging infrastructure, there can be no transition to electric driving. This article is about the future of the charging market. His main interest is getting everybody behind the wheel of an electric vehicle. For that to become reality, adequate charging infrastructure is needed, of course. Now, in his vision, there are four charging options or modes. I think this makes a lot of sense. Charging while parked at home or at work. Charging while parked connected to a public curbside charger operated by a CPO, charge point operator. Charging while doing something else like shopping or seeing a movie. I love this idea. And charging while traveling. This requires using a super fast charging station with a capacity of up to 350 kilowatt. Speed of charging is of the essence. Now I believe by 2030, we'll be looking at speeds of more like 700, 800 kilowatt. And I think charging will no longer be seen as something laborious. It will be seen as something that's done so quickly that we barely have time to take a pee and buy a drink from the charging station. Now, you probably don't remember how fast chargers were in 2010. Well, do some research on that and look how far we've come already. Now, currently, the European charging market serves a fleet of about 2.2 million electric cars. Nearly half of them can charge at home or at the driver's workplace. That leaves over half of the EV owners needing regular use of a public charger from a few times a month to a few times a week, depending on the use. For regular use, they can choose any of the above mentioned three types of chargers. These chargers should be in the vicinity of where they park at night, where they work, along the routes they often travel, or at places they often visit, like malls or grocery stores. Now, when you think about the four options we talked about before, the four different types of chargers, different locations, different places, you can see that actually there are so many more choices over petrol stations, so many more options. Even if you live in an apartment, you still have way more options than what you have right now with petrol or diesel. So besides the regular charging, most EV drivers will use a supercharger from time to time. In Europe, the average passenger vehicle drives 10,000 kilometers per year. Newer vehicles drive a bit more than older vehicles, as do more expensive vehicles. Now, currently, electric vehicles are mostly new and expensive. For simplicity, the public charging market is estimated at 
1.1 million cars times 15,000 kilometers times 140 watt. That makes a nice 2.3 billion kilowatt hours. If the average price is 40 cents, 40 euro cents per kilowatt hour, then revenue for the charging companies is about 924 million from daily charging. Beside this, there is the charging while traveling. Anecdotally, this is about twice a year for a 30 kilowatt hour times 2.2 million electric vehicles. That is another $50 million. A 1 billion euro European charging market is starting to become interesting for companies to invest in. Oil companies are even getting in on it now. Now, easy access to charging is a prerequisite for most EV buyers. As a consequence, most electric vehicles are bought by people who do have access to easy and often cheap charging. While range anxiety is often discussed as a problem for electric car drivers, charging anxiety is actually a big reason to not become an electric car driver. But this 1 billion euro figure is interesting enough that charging companies are accelerating the speed with which they install charges at an incredibly fast rate. If you'd seen some of the videos I'd made about the numbers of charges being deployed worldwide, it is spectacular. Now, profitable business is within reach after normal initial losses for one to three years. Support of governments is still needed to get the necessary permits and the grid connections. Some subsidy, subsidies to build charges in underserved areas are going to help. We need those. Now, right now, many national governments are stimulating charger deployment with incentives and special licensing plans. For example, the Dutch charging plan calls for 1 million public and semi-public charges by 2030. In Germany, the EU in its targets for 2030 is going after 3.5 million. If you think those numbers do not add up, that is because the EU copied the numbers from the legacy car industry. They are from a time when BMW expected to sell 15% electric cars in 2030. And it was considered a leader in the transition. BMW now expects over 50% and is considered a laggard. Now, the increase in public charging options makes having an electric vehicle as their next car an acceptable option for most people, especially people in Europe. This growing demand in the charging market makes installing more charges attractive to private business. The chicken and egg problem has changed into a spiral of positive feedback, stimulating electric car buying and charge installation. Remember, a lot of us do live in a house where we can simply charge from home 99% of the time. This means that adoption for most people is actually not that hard. Now, some European countries are already above 20% of new car sales being electric this year. In fact, some of them are quite a bit above that. A bigger number of countries will pass the 10% mark very soon. More demand stimulates more and more capable models, and we see over 150 and growing electric car models at dealerships. If you're in China, well, it's a lot, lot more than that. And we see another chicken and egg situation becoming a positive feedback spiral. So in 2030, where will we be? Well, Martin says that depending on who you ask, there will be 50 million to over 100 million fully electric vehicles on the roads in Europe in 2030. The analysts of Bloomberg NEF, the most progressive among the settled industry advisors who are all hopelessly behind, Think 50 million. The futurologist like Tony Sieber, who is a genius in my opinion, go to his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below, Rethink X, and watch his content. He's brilliant. Tony Sieber and many readers of fan sites for renewable energy and electric vehicles like Clean Technica think it will be at least double that number, so at least 100 million. So, with that number of electric cars on the roads, the portion that do not have private charging is likely above 60%. How much driving they do is hard to predict though. And when a product becomes cheaper and better, consumption tends to increase. Driving and traveling will change as a result. Some see an increase in the use of robo taxis and car sharing. No question there will be. That is fewer vehicles that drive more miles. Others think that cheaper traveling and use of full self-driving tech will stimulate more traveling by private car at the cost of traveling by public transport. I agree there'll be way more travel once our cars are autonomous. People will do more and more. 
Now, beside the transition to electric driving, there will be a change in how we use transport. The numbers for cars in 2030 are based on a business as usual scenario, or in this case, a driving as usual scenario. They are likely wrong, but they can help to estimate the number of kilometers driven by electric cars. With more electric cars on the road, there will be more older cars and smaller secondhand cars that drive less. So that makes the lower bound of 60% of 50 million cars times 12,000 kilometers times 140 kilowatt per kilometer times 0.35 cents per kilowatt hour, which equals 17.5 billion euros. Now the upper bound would be 60% of 100 million cars, 10,000 kilometers times 140 watts per kilometer times 35 cents per kilowatt hour, which equals 29.4 billion euros. This is normal for daily driving. That's a lot of money per year. Now, compared to the USA, in Europe, the car is more often used for holidays and vacations. That adds another 10% at high speed, high profit highway charges. What about trucking? Well, trucking will be in a war over the still limited supply of electric trucks with their lower cost per kilometer, their lower operating costs, their lower costs of running, their longer life. The first companies that can switch to electric have a big competitive advantage over their competitors. It will be almost impossible to compete. If your competitor has all electric trucks and you don't, you're basically dead in the water. So truck charging at mega charges will rise fast to a 30 billion euro market a few years after 2030. Smaller but lucrative markets will be electric general aviation that needs charging facilities at hundreds of smaller airports and landing strips and inland shipping using container sized battery swapping. Smarter gas stations close before going broke or they convert to electric stations. Those that are too slow in understanding what is happening are going to go bankrupt very, very quickly. Now, what about in 2040? Well, in 2040, driving in Europe will be almost completely electric and the landscape will have completely changed. It'll be hard to find fuel for your ICE vehicle if you own one and even harder to find places to drive. Many cities and urban areas will be closed to vehicles with a tailpipe and auto ownership in Central Europe and Eastern Europe will be growing to the levels in Western and Southern Europe. Cheaper driving will enable more driving. So eventually this charging market in Europe will grow to become a 150 billion euro market, which is a lot smaller than the gasoline and diesel markets of yesteryear. A lot of people will charge using their own home solar, but it's still an interesting and very profitable market for those companies that were first and got the best locations. Think maybe Tesla. So by 2040, the world will be a very, very, very different place. And I'm looking forward to it, honestly, with huge optimism. I really think the world is getting better and better every day. And that's largely due to renewable energy and clean cars. Thanks for watching the channel. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.